Hello everyone, welcome back to the All Brand Show. And you guys, this is the first All Brand Show of 2022. Um, so you may be wondering, who are you? Hi, <laughs> um, my name is Jordan Lang. I'm the marketing coordinator for All Brands. Um, you usually can find me behind the camera, behind the scenes um, of the All Brand Show. I'm usually cutting and directing and doing all things uh, you know, behind closed doors. So, but here I am, I'm on camera today. You may be wondering, why are you on camera today? Um, both Barbara and Callie are feeling a little bit under the weather. So I'm here to take their place one night only. Uh, I'll be hosting the show. Um, so I just wanted to say hello. Hi, you can put a face to a name now. Um, but let's go ahead and, and look at some comments and say hello to some folks. All right. Let's see. We have Kathy from ooh, Kansas. Let's see. Sandy from Pennsylvania. Barbara from East Tennessee. Snowy East Tennessee, mind you. I'm so jealous. My brother goes to school in, in northern Alabama, and he had snow a couple of days ago, and I was so, 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 so jealous. Um, we have Randy from Florida. How's the weather over there? Probably the same over here, you know? We've got mutual climate over there in Florida and Louisiana. Um, we've got Carolyn in Arizona. Very, very cool. Norma in Texas. We've got uh, Kathy in Arkansas. Very cool. You guys are from all over the place. Hi. Um, so, yeah, I just wanted to say hello to you guys. Uh, and then we've got Yvonne. Hello, hello. Sully's mom from Michigan. Hello, Sully's mom. Um, but you guys, oh, I see seven degrees. Seven degrees in Nebraska. Oh, you guys, y'all, it's like 75 here. What I would give for some cold weather. I love some cold weather. Um, but you see it scrolling across the bottom of the screen. You guys, we're giving away a $50 All Brands gift card. You heard it here. 50 bucks to spend on whatever you want at allbrands.com. So if you want to enter that giveaway, just drop in the chat, hashtag allbrands, just all one word with a hashtag. So let me see if I can get it up and, and you see here, allbrands, hashtag allbrands, just one word, plain and simple, boom, you're automatically entered to win a $50 gift card and we'll pick the winner at the end of the show. How cool is that? Um, but enough for me, I know you don't want to hear me talk the whole time. We have an amazing guest today. We have Becky Thompson from Power Tools with Thread, and she's going to show us a little bit on the 10 needle, on the scan and cut, on the luminaire. Who knows? You know, you never know on this show. So let's go ahead and we'll bring Becky in. Hey, Becky. Hey, I don't want to stand in front of January. <laughs> there we go. <laughs> <laughs> so let's let's you take it away. What are we doing today? Well, okay, so I am doing a year-long sew-along with all of my viewers who want to participate doing Kimberbell's Cuties table toppers. And these are a great little project. There are 12 table toppers in the book. And the this is a great project because it's going to be able to uh, you know, I have a mix of viewers. I have viewers that are quilters and not embroiderers. And I have viewers that are embroiderers and they really want to get into quilting. So this Kimberbell Cuties book is awesome because it does a little bit of both. And I'm going to walk all of my viewers through it. Every month, we're going to make a table topper. And this is the one thing. January and these adorable snowmen on here and you you're never going to be late you don't have to catch up because I have all of my tutorials on my YouTube channel power tools with thread if you go to YouTube and type in power tools I think probably DeWalt will come up first and then I'll be right behind that <laughs> but we you know I show you how to step by step make this uh this particular topper and we did this at the end of last month so it's ready to use for the whole month of january and then february's is what we're going to play with today a little bit and i have created already the february table topper 
Isn't that adorable? I love this. It is a fabric bundle from April Rosenthal for Moda. I can't remember the name of it off the top of my head. So, but what we're going to do today is we're going to, um, we're going to do the embroidery on this. And uh, I am going to go ahead and show you how. So let me back up just a little bit. So there is the book that gives the patterns on how to make the toppers themselves. That's the quilting part. And then there is a companion CD. I've got it here somewhere. And there's a companion CD that goes with this. And the CD has embroidery designs and it has SVG files. So uh, one of the things I love to teach on my channel is that you don't have to have an embroidery machine, an embroidery CD, if you have a paper pattern that also includes the files, the uh, the designs that you would need for applique. So right here, here's the hat. Here's the Santa hat and the nose and the snowman that we did for this one. So we today, we're I'm going to show you how, if you don't have the CD, because I'm going to show you how to automate embroidery applique with just a paper pattern. And that's what's really, really cool about what we do on Power Tools with Thread. So for my viewers that are wanting to know how to make this topper, I will have additional videos after this live. They're going to come out later on this month. And we're going to go through and baby step how to make the topper. But so right now, we're just going to go through and I'm going to show you how to use the Brother Scan and Cut and a paper applique pattern and use a software called Simply Applique to be able to embroider the designs on, on your table topper. So what today's table topper is going to, going to look like is that one right there in the middle with the X's and the O's. That's what that's going to look like. So we're gonna cut out the applique shapes with the Brother Scan and Cut and we are going to sew them down with Simply Applique software. So, Jordan. Becky. Are you there? <laughs> <laughs> hey, so um, I think what we're going to do first is just uh, go over to the scan and cut. And okay. we're going to scan in the paper pattern. Perfect. And then uh, I'm going to, and I'll show everybody how to do that. So if you want cool. to <clears throat> just go ahead and put you on the screen, say hi to people, get questions, and I'll you move my it. camera so I've we don't get anybody uh, sick. I've already seen some questions already that I know I can answer. So I'll go ahead and put Great. those on the screen. So we had uh, Karen Carr want to know how much the book and the USB were. Um, and we do have an overlay for that if I can pull it up really quickly. Let's see. La, la, la. Here it is. Okay. So the Kimberbell Cuties, the CD and the pattern book. So you can get the pattern book for $24.95 and then the CD for $34.95. Not very good at quick math. I don't know how much of that adds together, <laughs> um, but those are the prices for the the CD and the pattern book. So that was one question I, I knew I could answer. I will not be using... Oh, sorry. <laughs> I was trying to chat. <laughs> oh, you were trying to chat? <laughs> yes, we have. Uh, I already know. If you guys have any questions during the live, go ahead and drop them in the comments, and we'll try to answer them during the show so we can get all your, your questions and get some answers out there for you. So you can do this on your own. Let's see. All brands, can you post a link for the book? I think some of our friends in the chat may have gotten to it. Yes, you guys. You guys are always on top of it, much quicker than I can be. Let's see. Yeah, six, there you go. $60 for both. I'm not good at math, you guys. That was not my strong subject. I'm very much an English girl. I like to write. I like to read. That's that's my home. <laughs> Let's see. All right. Would Simply Applique be useful without the scan and cut? That's a question from Cheryl. That's a good question. I wouldn't know that. <laughs> 
Let's see. Becky, are you there? Oh, I hear a little bit. Are you there, Becky? So that question is, oh, is simply application any use without the scan and cut, right? That was yes. the question. Would simply application be useful without the scan and cut? That was the question from Cheryl. Simply applique, what we're doing uses a file type called an FCM, like Frank Charlie Mark and or Frank Charlie Mike. And that file gets made either in the scan and cut or it gets made in the brother canvas. So if you can create an SVG file, because you can import SVG files to the brother canvas, then you can download the FCM file from that SVG that the canvas will convert it. Does that make sense? That makes sense to me. We okay. already have tons of questions coming in. You guys are, are, are so, you want to know everything. Let's see. <laughs> uh, Katie said hoop size. What's the hoop size? We haven't even gotten there yet. She is. So this, is this requires a six by eight hoop at a minimum. You, you will need a six by eight hoop. You cannot do this with a five by seven. There you go. Let's see. Kathy, does one have to have a brother sewing machine to use Simply Applique software? Absolutely not. Simply Applique will save to every single home embroidery machine format. Nice. So if you have a Janome or a Bernina or anything else, Simply Applique will save to that format for you. But it's it's best to have a scan and cut in order to um, for ease of use. The only limited restriction on Simply Applique or BES4, which is the parent software for Simply Applique, Simply Applique is a module inside of BES4. The only requirement is that it must run on a PC, and it can run uh on a mac with parallels and a windows os perfect yeah i know i think um i can't remember who but somebody had found a way to use the uh software on a mac but i'm not 100 percent sure there was some kind yeah of you, you have to run you have to yeah. run a utility on a mac called parallels and then you have to have the windows operating system installed on the mac yeah. Yes, that was it. Perfect. All right. So, um, um, the questions, but we're going to let you get to it, Becky. I know you've got a lot you want to show. <laughs> okay. So I'm just going to put this like this. Um, I have made a copy of that paper pattern that I showed you guys that was in the book. Okay. And you see how we still have here's january's and february's and here's all the words okay and we're going to clean all of that up in the brother canvas so i'm using the scanning mat and the scanning mat is a wonderful tool that comes with a, that is an additional accessory to the scan and cut it's not sticky at all and it has a clear plastic flap and i really like the scanning mat because it will keep away any threads or, you know, fur baby fur or anything like that from getting uh, into your image. So I prefer this. Now, if you don't have one of these, you can use the low tack mat, which is the turquoise colored one. I would not recommend putting a paper pattern on the purple standard tack mat or the gold fabric mat, it may not come off. So you would want to use either the, the low tack mat or a scanning mat. And I prefer the scanning mat because you can get thread and dog fur on here. So we're gonna scan this in. And to scan it in, it's very simple. I had somebody ask me today, um, you know, what's the difference between a scan and cut and a cricket? And while they're both, uh, oh, let me say a scan and cut and other cutting machines. Let's use that. All of them are cutting machines, but this, the, the scan and cut is head and shoulders technology above any other cutting machine because it scans in 
and can create images from that and can create cut images from that. So that's why there's, you know, people ask me, why is there such a price difference? Because other than the fact that they both cut, they are entirely different technology altogether. So to me, this one is head and shoulders above any other cutting machine that's on the market. So I have just put the mat in here. And if you have, I'm running, mine is the SDX225. And if you have the old uh, series, the CM series, and Simply Applique will work with the CM series uh, scan and cuts because the FCM file that the scan and cut creates is still the same. So on the mats, though, it only goes in one way with the SDX models. If you have a CM model, the older model, you can go and put the mat in from either direction. And you'll see because the other, the other one has another arrow down at the bottom. The mats are not compatible between the machines. So to load the, the mat, there's a little, the middle button right here, it looks like your mat. You just press it, tell it okay. And I'm gonna load the mat and it just slowly kind of pulls it in there. Let me see if I can zoom into my screen for you a little bit. Is that better? Is that okay? Uh, it still looks a little bit of the same, but I mean, I don't think the, I don't think it's that far off. I think it looks pretty good. Okay. So on the scan and cut, you've got these first two big icons right here on the home screen. And this first one says pattern and the second one says scan. And I think the hardest thing for people is to know what these mean. This, this one right here, pattern with all these shapes, these are patterns that are internal to the machine when you bought it. So your machine, depending on the model number, has oodles and oodles and oodles, thousands of designs in it. But we don't need to mess with that right now. We want to scan this paper pattern that I just loaded on this mat. So all you have to do is press scan. And it, it's going to ask you a couple of questions. It says, do you want a direct cut? And, or do you want to scan to cut data or do you want to scan it to a USB? And then there's some arrows and you can go to other options as well. I want to scan to cut data, the, the middle one right here. And I'm just going to tell it start. Let me back out. Now I have an account at... Uh, canvasworkspace.brother.com and you do not have to have a brother machine in order to be able to use a canvas workspace that's the beauty of that and so um you would want to go there and create an account and it's free and so here is the image right here that we just scanned in and up here at the top let me get in see if i can does my zoom work for you guys can does that is that zoomed for you or is that just for me? Just for you. We still see the same angle. You might have to move move the actual camera up a bit. <laughs> I can't move the camera up. Let me move, so move the scan and cut. <laughs> Let me move the machine. See if I can't get you any closer. Yeah, we could. Uh, that was a little bit better. We could see the screen a little bit. Here, is that better? Yeah, we can actually see the scan. That's pretty cool. Okay, so you, whenever you have a scan, you kind of want to pay attention to what it is that you're actually after. I am after the X and I'm after the O and the O has a little heart in it. And so there are three choices on the screen right here, these buttons. This one right here that looks like a circle and a square that have been welded together, but you can't see anything in the middle of it. You can only see the outside line that means outside only. And it's only going to pay attention to the outsides of the designs on the screen. Well, I don't want it to pay attention just to the outside because I want to capture that little heart in the middle. And then we have this second button. And this second button means inside and outside with regions. And that's usually used for color. If you were wanting to try to cut out 
uh, only certain colors on a piece of fabric or something. And then this third button is the square and the circle together, but you can see where they're welded in the middle. So this means inside and outside. And if I press this button, it will capture the little heart inside of my O. So that's the one I want it to process. I'm gonna touch that button and it says, okay, this is what I'm gonna do. And it gives you a couple of little arrows right here where you can actually move them and move around on the screen and figure out, you know, maybe you only want that little part. That's, you certainly can do that, but it's a lot of work and it's kind of hard on this little screen. And that's why I like the wireless capability of the scan and cut. And we can go to the brother canvas and clean it up in just a few seconds. So I'm just going to tell it okay so it can capture the entire screen and hit okay. And it wants to know where do you want to save it? I can save it into the machine. I can save it wirelessly to the cloud, those little radar waves there, or I can save it to a USB. I want to save it to the cloud. And again, you have to have an account on the cloud now. And I have a video on how to sync your machine with your account on the cloud. And it says save successful and I'm gonna tell it okay. So we're ready to go over to my desktop and um, take a look at Brother Canvas. You wanna change the screen, Jordan? There we go. Oh, and I just realized I was muted the whole time. <laughs> you guys, live TV. Isn't it great? But I was saying, let's see. If, <laughs> Becky, are you good? Can we can we see you? There we go. All right. Uh, Jordan, would you would you send me a StreamYard link uh, on my email so I can join you on my desktop? Yeah, yeah, I'll send it to you. I have my email there up in here we got it let's see did you get it we i sent it in the little chat if you want to go in there and 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 do it from there i need it in my email so oh, i can me. have it <laughs> i got you i got you <laughs> Let's see. You guys, te live television. It's no great. Problem. No problem. Oh, Cindy likes the quote behind me. Thanks. I think Barbara made it, actually. Isn't it beautiful? I think Barbara made that. That'll be on my list of things to do to figure out how to quilt. But baby steps. I got to figure out how to sew first. Because <laughs> I don't know how. But I'm actually going to buy a sewing machine today. Let's see, let's get her that link so she can pull that up. Did you get it? Yes. Perfect. So, you want to switch me over to my desktop? Yeah, let's solo lay that out. There we go. Can you see? Let's see. I need to share. Hmm. That's technology for you. It's great when it works, but when it doesn't work, not so great. <laughs> Let's see here. Let me see. Is this it? Oh, there we go. Wait, I see something. Something's happening in there. How about that? Oh, I've got an inception happening. <laughs> okay, hold on just a minute. Um, let me stop sharing and let me do it again. 
and I'm going to share screen and I'm going to choose Oh, we got more inception. Nope. <laughs> I love that movie Inception. You know what I'm talking about? When they have the, it's like the mirror and it just keeps, it keeps mimicking the same thing. That's what I see. It looks like Inception. <laughs> Look at that. Look, Tina, t Tina said you had good tech skills. Does that make you feel a little bit better? <laughs> We're figuring it out. We, I, we know, got I, it. Know, I know. There you go. There it Tina. is. Tina. <laughs> <laughs> Yay. Okay. So we are here at the uh, Brother Canvas. And up here at the top, you can see where it says canvasworkspace.brother.com. And when you first log on here, you've got some tabs across the top. You've got Canvas Project, My Projects, Pattern Collection, and Disney. You can create a new project right here. And then they have all of these projects, and they're all free. You can do them here. So I'm going to go to My Projects because I scanned that uh, document up to the cloud, and there it is right there. And when you, when you get here, you get uh, two buttons. Here's edit this project and there is download. And we're not ready to download this just yet. So I'm gonna click on the edit button and it's uh, gonna think about editing. Yeah, it's not sure. Like, do I wanna be edited? I don't, I don't think I do. I think I wanna stay the same. <laughs> good. It's good, it's just taking its time. So there it is, there's everything that we uh, scanned in. And the way I find it easiest to clean up the map, because you can see some of the little letter pieces, you can see a little bit of the words that were on the body of the snowman from January, and this line right here is the bottom of the page. And what I usually do is I will grab what I want and move it off the mat, and I'm going to actually, I. I don't want to change the orientation of the heart inside of the O. So I'm going to drag my cursor across both of them. And you can see they both get little dashed lines. And then I'm going to put my cursor over it and I'm going to right click and I want to group it. And now it has become one object and that's exactly what I want. So now I'm going to move this off the page. And then to clean up the mat, I'm going to put my cursor up here in the upper left corner, and I'm going to drag it all the way down to the bottom. So everything on the page is highlighted, and then I'm just going to hit delete on my keyboard, and it goes away. So now we only need to play with the X and the O. Now we need... Uh, we need four cuts of the X and O for each corner of the table topper. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to group both of these by taking my cursor and dragging it over the both of them. Right click and group. And click off. And then I'm just going to right click again. Whoop. Right click. Oh, I'm stopping. Okay, so now it's grouped. Now I'm going to right click again and go copy and right click paste. Bring it up. Right click paste and right click paste. So now we have four. And I'm just going to put these in different quadrants of the map there on the canvas. And we are. Um, ready to cut them out. Now, one thing I need to warn you about is once you have set the cut file, you want to uh, don't change the size. So if you want to change the size of it, like um, for instance, if you were going to make the snowman, which requires this uh, six by eight hoop, but you want to make it a little bit smaller, 
you can do that now and make it so that it'll fit your five by seven hoop. Because you can do this with a five by seven hoop if you are using Simply Applique, because you can resize these files to exactly what you want them to be in the Brother Canvas. If you're going to use the design CD with all the embroidery files on it, then you have to uh, use the right hoop for that. But so right here, we've already set what the size is going to be on these. This is exactly what came out of the paper pattern, and this is the way I'm going to leave it. So all I have to do right now, you want to switch back to my, great. So all I have to do right now is I'm going to hit download. And when I do that, it says, okay, select the file transfer method. And we're going to do both of these, okay? But this is the one we're going to do first. We're going to do scan and cut transfer. And I'm going to click this button. And boom, it's finished. So that's all done. I'm going to tell it close because it said scan and cut transfer is ready. So it has already gone down to my scan and cut. So I'm going to hit close. And now I want to download it again for the embroidery file. So I am going to, I don't, I don't need all of these for the embroidery file. I'm going to stitch one of these four times. So I'm going to click this one and hit delete. And this one, delete, and this one, delete. I use my delete key on my keyboard. And that's all I need to do for that. So I'm going to click download again. And now I'm going to use download to PC. And you see it creates that FCM file. That's that Frank Charlie Mike I was talking about. That's the FCM file. I'm going to click that. And it's going to jump into my downloads folder right here. So I. Uh, that's all I need to do for that for now. And I am going to go ahead and click the button to open up. Uh, this is Pace Setter BES4 on my screen. That's not showing right on my, on my screen, Jordan. Are you there, Jordan? You are on mute. I'm here. Okay. Let's see. Well, did you click it? uh go let me see oh i know why hold on it's because i'm sharing the tab on the internet for the share oh yeah you got to share the whole screen i gotcha so hold on a minute let me <laughs> let me uh share and this is like real life you guys it's it's never perfect you know you know there's always tons of mess ups and little snags but that's what makes it real, you know? Let's see. see I'm trying to get to where <laughs> it sees uh, what I want it to see. The there. whole screen. I gotcha. There we are. Now, I know you're, you're a tech whiz, so I, full, I put full faith in you. You see that? Look at her. Uh, <laughs> okay. So what you're seeing right here is actually BES4. Now, BES4, I call it the mothership to Simply Applique. So where BES4 is pretty expensive, and this software was actually a plus one when I bought my 10 needle from All Brands. So I got this software for free, thank you very much, All Brands, uh, by buying the 10 needles. So that was a really cool deal. But if you uh, are, um, so if, or you can buy Simply Applique all by itself. And that's much less expensive than BES4. And the, there's, the screens look virtually identical and they just are so easy. This software is just absolutely amazing and you're gonna love what it can do. So right now, let's go over to the scan and cut and cut out our X's and O's, okay? All right, we're gonna come back to my beautiful face <laughs> while Becky moves her camera. Um, but you guys, I when I, I I came into this world knowing virtually like nothing about sewing, embroidery, quilting, all of these hobbies that that you guys have, and I've been working here for over a year now, and I 
I'm like begging my mom. And I was like, let's start a side hustle. We'll get an embroidery machine and we're going to embroider everything and la, 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 la. And so I just went from zero to a hundred within a year. Now I just want to do everything. I want to embroider all the things. I want to sew all the things. I just, I need to get in. I need to craft. <laughs> Let's oh, don't see. feel bad. I, you know how many uh, <laughs> like fabric distributors I talk to that are not quilters? It's amazing. <laughs> <laughs> so I am using the low tack mat, and I have heat and bond already on the back of my fabric. It is very adhered to the fabric. You want it to be one with the fabric. If you're using the standard tack mat, which is purple, or the gold mat, which is the fabric mat, you do not want to put, you're going to want to put this fabric side down. Okay. And I leave the paper on when I do the purple and the gold mat. There's all different schools of thought on that. And I have a theory that it's, a lot of it depends on the humidity in your area where you live as well, too. So they say on the gold mat, you're not supposed to put anything on the back of the fabric and you're supposed to cut it fabric side up. Well, I need heat and bond on the back of mine. So I've done it both ways and it works fine. But definitely the rule is if you're not using the low tack mat, if you're using the purple mat or the gold mat, you need to put that fabric fabric side down and you would want to mirror your images. OK, and you can do that on the scan and cut. But I've got heat and bond on the back. I have the low tack mat, the turquoise one. And I'm just going to take my fabric and put it, put one in each quadrant on the mat. And in my last video I did, I, I used the gold blade, the fabric blade. And I ended up having to cut it three times. I think my gold blades uh, seem better days. <laughs> Because I use it constantly. I'm always cutting fabric on this thing. So. Hey, due to time, we're going to skip the clear blue tiles today, okay? We're just going to okay. do the embroidery and simply applique. That's cool. Perfectly fine. Okay, good. All I'm right. Just go to town. <laughs> And you said this is heat and bond light, right? Not regular? Heat and bond light, yes. Got it. Yeah. Okay, so now I am ready to cut out my X's and O's. Everybody raise your hand who wants to cut out the center of those hearts by hand. Anyone? <laughs> Not me. Okay. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to go back to home. And it says, we're going to delete all the patterns. That's okay, because we're done with the scanning part of it. And I'm going to tell it, okay. I'm going to load my mat again. And it's dragging it in real slow. And now we need to get that those the X's and O's from the, uh, from the Brother Canvas that was transferred down to the machine. So earlier I had told you that these are patterns that are already in the machine. So you want to use this button down here that says retrieve data. And that's the one we're going to get. And it wants to know where do you want to get it from? Let me pull this up closer. Where do you want to get it from? You can get it from inside the machine. You can get it from the web. You can get it from a USB. Or if you're cabled to your laptop or computer, you can get it from there. I want to get it from the web. And it says retrieving. And there's my X's and O's right there. Now, here is the true beauty of the scan and cut. Right here in this row of three buttons, the middle one looks like your mat with a scanning bar. And we're going to touch that. And I'm going to tell it start. And it's going to scan in the mat. And this is how you can make sure that all of the design is on the fabric where you want it. Oh, awesome. That looks great. Let me pull you guys in here so you can see. Can you see that okay? So this one, I had grouped them. Oh, that's another thing too. If you group them, 
in the cloud and send them down, they stay grouped. You cannot ungroup them once they get down to your machine. So if you need to ungroup, and we're going to do that here in a minute, you would do that uh, in the canvas and then send it down. This looks great. I think it's going to cut out just fine. So I don't need to do anything else to this now at all. I'm just going to touch OK. And it says, please select. And I want to cut. And it says processing. You want to make sure that half cut is off. And that's right here above the test button. And you want that, you would want it on if you're doing vinyl. But I want it off. So I'm just going to tell it start. Hey, Becky, we have and a question in the chat. So Audrey wants to know, can you use PE Design 11 instead of Simply Applique? Um, I have. Oh, hold on. You cannot. Uh, I looked through, now I do not have PE design, but I did look through the, um, the user guide for PE design and there's nowhere there to be able to import the FCM file that's created by the scan and cut and the canvas. And we have another question. Lady Fair wants to know what that tool caddy is on the side of your scan and cut. <laughs> this is fabulous this is a command razor cup for your shower and i have i have it on both of my scan and cuts <laughs> you do need that and it's amazing to like shave your legs and armpits <laughs> that is super funny now i put the black blade in here like i said this is the standard blade and i put it in here because my gold blade has seen better days i think We're all done. Yay. That was Isn't that very fabulous? Good. Okay, let's see how we did. This that is the very, little spatula that comes with it. And I'm just going to pull this up. Oh, yeah. Love it. Look at that. Okay. Oh, yeah. I like that. Y'all, this is so much fun. It's almost like watching one of those like satisfying videos, like watching peeling it off. It's off like popping bubble, bubble wrap. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> now you would use a weeding tool and look at this beauty. Isn't that pretty? I am taking one of Amy uh, Bachman's scan and cut class. And this was in this month's box subscription. Isn't that so neat? That's a weeding tool. That is and it's gorgeous. got a little tiny thing. Now, if you don't have a weeding tool, you can get them on, uh, they, there are accessories you can get, and they also have them, um, you can actually use a dental tool, believe it or not. So there we go. These are coming out just perfect. Look at that, less than two minutes, all of my letters are cut out. Isn't nice. that precious? That was so simple. It was so simple. All right, I'm going to hit the eject button on the mat and uh, we're done. Now, you have to be, you do need to be careful, especially if you do not have anything on the back of your uh, fabric. You need to be careful that you don't stretch them. And I usually will just kind of scrape versus pulling with my fingers. You don't want to stretch your letters. Oh, we have a question from Lisa. She said, if you have an option of black or gold blade, which would you recommend? Um, the black is the all-purpose blade. So I'd probably go with that one. That way, because um, the gold blade is specific to fabric. And if you are ever going to be uh, cutting vinyl, you never know, then you might want to go ahead and have the black blade, right? Because this thing can cut cork, you guys. Cork. Yes. Yes. Reen Wilcoxon from Embroidery Garden, as a matter of fact, has several uh, designs that you can cut cork for her purses and whatnot on the scan and cut. Yes. We actually did a couple of videos with Reen before when she cut out some cork. And I was just like dumbfounded. I was like, that Asian. machine can cut cork? <laughs> 
Okay, so we are ready to go back over to the computer screen. Becky's on the move, you guys. She's moving. <laughs> I promise. I can see. I can see her setting back up. <laughs> there she okay. is. Okay. <laughs> so I need to reshare my whole screen. Okay. Let me stop screen. Let me share. Share screen. An entire screen. and share and i need to get this oops we got inception that. again <laughs> there we go perfect okay great so this is bes4 the only difference between bes4 software and the simply applique module is up here in this upper left corner, you'll see a B in the BES4, or you will see an A in Simply Applique. That's it. That's the only difference. Everything else is the same. Before I get started, what I like to do is come over here to View, and I want to go to Preferences, and I want to go to Grid, the Grid tab. And you want to make sure that you are at a half inch on the horizontal and the vertical. So you would put 0 0.5. I think by default, it pops in at a metric. I'm not sure or something. And then you can change your lines to be anything you want. And I chose a pretty pink. And for my uh, major grid, which is the four quadrants, I chose a purple. So I'm gonna tell it, okay. And that's important to do that. So you know that each one of these little boxes is one half inch. And that's going to help you when you go to put your designs and align everything, what you need to be doing. So remember, I had done the download and it went to my downloads folder. So I'm going to go right here up to this B. This is like file. And I'm going to click this and I'm going to click import FCM. And there it is right there because I you can navigate on this drop down. You can navigate to your downloads folder. Here it is right there. And there's my X and O. And I'm going to tell it open. And there they are. Now, the how they're aligned right now is how they were in the canvas. And so what I'm going to do, first of all, is I'm going to grab a. Uh, both of them, I'm going to drag my cursor over both of them. This is just to be sure for alignment purposes. I'm going to click on the Arrange tab up at the top, and I'm going to click the Center button. I think we're fine. There we are. It didn't go anywhere. And now I want to move them just a little bit farther apart. I had done some measurements earlier, and I think I want them to, uh, let me see, I want just... Oh, you know what? I had told you all about grouping. So here's something I need to do. I'm going to highlight this. I'm going to hit delete. Make that go away. I'm going to come down here to my uh, deal. I need to go back to Canvas Workspace. Do you see my screen? Yes, yeah, you can. Okay. Yeah. So remember I had grouped these to make multiples? I'm going to click on this again. I'm going to right click and I'm going to ungroup. So now I have two objects. Now I'll be able to move them independently of one another on the uh, in the software. So I'm going to hit download again. And I'm going to go, it's, it's going to say it's going to overwrite probably. Oh, it made a parentheses one. That's fine. Okay. So now I'm going to go back to BES4, and I want to go File, Import FCM, and I want this one, and I'm going to open. There they are. So I I wanted like it um, a about I you know that's almost too far apart right there. So I'm going to move them just a little bit closer until they are right now. Remember we. Um, Group this one, the heart and the O, 
we group those. And so I want that to stay grouped. So now I'm just going to drag it over a little bit closer. I think that's a real good alignment. That looks like that's about a four and a half inch width, which is perfect for the triangle on the topper. And I want to turn this into an embroidery file now. So if it matters, this is where you would change what stitches when. But in this case, it doesn't matter. It's going to stitch the X first and it's going to stitch the O second because this is, this is actually a stitch order. And I'm going to, on my keyboard, I'm going to touch Control A to select all. And you want to make sure it says all items is highlighted and artwork and both of these artwork pieces are highlighted. And then we're going to go to the Tools tab up at the top on the left. And there's a single button right here that says convert to applique. And I'm going to press it. Ta-da! We're done. How about that? So now if I were to go over here into these design files, see it says applique right there. There's a plus sign and I can click that. Here's your placement line. There's your tack down stitch. And there is your final satin stitch. So. If you wanted this to be, let me highlight the whole thing again. You can do one or all or whatever. Or um, if so, over here in the properties panel, it says applique type and see it says satin. I can hit the drop down next to satin and go to blanket and click apply. There's your blanket stitch. So I'm not a fan, especially it looks good on the circles. Uh, like this. I'm not a big fan of how these uh, default go. I normally pull this into Embrilliance and I'll tweak these a little bit as far as the angle of the stitches. But in this case, I want this to be a satin stitch. So I'm going to go back to satin and click apply. And up here, you can also fiddle with the stitch length and the stitch width. It's awesome, awesome stuff. So I am all done. And now I want to turn this into a, a PES file so I can use it on my 10 needle. And I'm going to go up here to the, the B again, or if you're in Simply Apple K, it'll be an A, the corner icon. And I want to go down to Save As. And I'm going to come down here, it says Files of Type. And it defaults to Paste Setter BRF files. I'm going to hit the drop down, and here are all of the different home embroidery machines that you can save these files to. So I'm going to choose the Baby Lock, uh, it's Brother Baby Lock Bernina, PES 10, and I'm going to title it uh, XO, and I'm going to save it in my EMB Designs folder. Becky, we have a question from Kay on YouTube. She says, if you have the, I'm assuming she means a scan and cut 325 or 330, can you do this without Canvas Workspace? You can do this without Canvas Workspace with any scan and cut. It just is easier for me because of my old eyes to work on the screen than it is to work on that little screen that's on the scan and cut itself. But uh you do not have to use Canvas Workspace, no. Perfect. So, yeah. I hope that helps, Kay. <laughs> so uh, I need to get some, get my hoop uh, hooped with some stabilizer. And for those of you that have already, I know some of you have already cut the fabric. I did back mm -hmm. the triangle fabric where the embroidery is going to go with some SF-101. And that's going to prevent any kind of puckering that will happen on that uh, that heavy satin stitch. Are we so, moving to the machine? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so I'm going to the machine. Uh, right now, I'm going to hoop my stabilizer, and I'm going to get the design uh, centered in the hoop. So uh, one of the things that you would do also, go, if you go back to my screen, Jordan. Sure. Uh, one of the things you would want to do is go ahead and do a uh, print. So you can print from 
simply applique and I'm going to print and I'm just going to do page one to one, which is the first page with the design and it has the crosshairs on it. So I'm going to click OK and get that printed out. And that way I can do the alignment on my uh, in my hoop. I keep looking like I'm literally I know nothing. I feel like I'm learning so much like do I need to go to that's awesome. today when I buy my sewing machine. <laughs> Just gonna get everything that I can get and knock it all out at once. That's what I'm gonna do. I'm just gonna I'm gonna learn how to do everything all at once. Maybe I'll get really overwhelmed, but hopefully not. <laughs> Let's see. Becky's on the move again. She's she's moving herself. We're gonna go over to um, I believe she's got a 10 needle to show us. Um, but I'm not hundred percent sure. We'll figure that out when we get there. Um, but how have you guys been? Are you guys enjoying the show? Like, I feel like I am learning so much. Like, I know I just said that, but come on. Yeah, that is right. Cindy Cindy does have videos on uh, PE Design 11. She's great, too. I love having her on the show. I feel like everybody teaches me so much. Then again, I came into here knowing nothing. Now I feel like I know a lot. Okay. Let's see. Loving this. Me, too, Kay. Me, too. Becky is the bomb. Mary said you're the bomb, Becky. Yay. <laughs> <laughs> you are the bomb. That's for sure. Oh, and we're back. Let's see. There she is. Oh, I'm, I've cut off my head. Um, I'm going to take the, I'm going to lean down. How's that? <laughs> I'm going to point my camera down to my table. I'm going to show you some tricks on how to center your design in the hoop and get it pretty close to where you want it to be. Is that, uh, I think that'll work. Okay. I think, I think, yeah, I think that'll work. We can, perfect, that's perfect. Okay, good. So <clears throat> I did the print and it's really handy to have a print Oh, you know what, Jordan? I need one more thing. What you need? I got to I got to get it. Oh, she I don't know where she went. Becky left me. Becky, <laughs> here, 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 here. Oh, and she's back. So <laughs> One of the things I like to do when I am getting ready to stitch out a design is from the print, I will um, on the crosshairs, I'll just go like a quarter of an inch outside of the crosshair line and on this, because that it's hard to really tell the scale when, um, when you've got that full sheet of paper, it's a lot easier to tell the scale when, uh, you have, when you have it closer to the actual, uh, design size. This doesn't have to be exact on these cuts, but it helps. Okay. Where's my topper? What did I do with my topper? Uh, I'll be right back. There it is. I see it. I guess I shouldn't complain about a large sewing room, but uh, you'll walk yourself to death in here. <laughs> so yeah, here's the topper. Right. Here's the design. And like I said, I did put some SF 101 on the back of uh, that triangle. All right. And so now I can see how that's going to stitch. That'll be precious right there, right? That'll look great. So what I want to do is I really want this to be centered. And this is old school, okay? The uh, 10 needle, um, uh, we're gonna play with the camera so you can see how to align it um, with the camera. But right now, I'm going to do this old school. I'm actually gonna mark, I've got my, um, I am looking at this point right here where these two pieces meet and I'm looking at the bottom point of the heart 
and I'm going to put my ruler on there and look. Let me see how long that is, and then I'll know center for sure, won't I? And if you can't do the math, you can always use a piece of paper. And that is about right. So if I fold this in half, there's center. Okay. So I'm going to fold this in half on the, on the lines, on my um, crosshairs. And I'm pre-folding the paper to make it easier to align it on here. Okay. Y'all, this is how we do this. How we roll. Okay. So if this is about center right there, I'm going to make a little mark with a um, friction marker. I'm going to tell it. Let's see. That's center right there. Okay. This comes off. This is a friction marker, and it comes off with uh, iron. All right. So... I would fold this in half and fold it back in half and put it like right there, okay? Because that is I, where I think that's where center is. That's exactly what it's gonna look like. And that's not too bad, I like it. So that's centered vertically. I didn't do it horizontally. We're gonna do that on the machine because it's kind of hard to tell because the paper's in the way. So, they designs and machine embroidery makes these things and they are called target stickers. And these are wonderful. It's hard to find center uh, vertically in this um, triangle. If it was a square, I wouldn't have any problem. So I'm kind of eyeballing it right here. And if I fold that down and I fold that up, then I know if I take the target sticker has a crosshair on it as well with an arrow for up. And I would put this quarter of the target sticker underneath that quarter of the paper. And that's center of the design right there on my train. Ta-da! Old school, you guys. That's how we did it before we had cameras and all of that. Good enough for government work. <laughs> yep. So, I just lay my stabilizer. I'm using some no-show poly mesh from Designs and Machine Embroidery. Okay, and um, you guys can get that at all brands as well. And I'm just kind of making sure this is the standard hoop, the 360 by 200 for the 10 needle. I think I need to loosen it up just a little bit. There we go. There. And pull out all the puckers. I didn't do that very good at all, did I? There we go. I usually have this done, but no kidding, guys. I literally finished that table topper, what, ladies, um, six minutes before show? Yeah. Literally, <laughs> we're all, like, trying to figure out um, what angles and stuff we want to use. And there's Becky. She's just sewing it, sewing it. And we're like, good Lord. <laughs> <laughs> hey, I got it done. I came through. So she this did. is a designs and machine embroidery silicone hoop mat. And I love this thing. I use it all the time. And I like the big dark line that's on it right here. And you just use the little north, south, east, and west marks on your hoop. And you set the hoop on the mat and line it up like that. So that it's straight. And let's see have some 505 you can use this or you can use kk2000 but what i'm going to do here is i'm going to take my target sticker and it doesn't have to be exact right now because we're going to play with it on the machine the reason you want to find some semblance of center before you use the camera system on the machine is because if it's too far off one way or the other, then it may tell you that the design doesn't fit in the hoop. And that's because it's going to bump against one of these edges or something. So you really want to get as close to center as possible when you start. 
And that's going to save you a lot of grief in the end. Also, when you are using the 10 needle, you want to keep in mind that you want the majority of your project hanging off the front of the machine toward you. That's why usually when you pull a design into the machine, it actually pulls in upside down. So we're going to float this. And floating means that we are not actually hooping the topper itself. The hooper is the hooper. <laughs> the, the topper is not hooped in between the, the two hoop uh, uh, bands. So to float it, you just put it where you think you want it. And that's pretty close to center. I can tell by the black line. I love this because the mat does not allow my hoop to slide around on my cutting mat like, like it usually would. And I can use some spray and um, I spray the stabilizer, okay? And then I will just lay this down on top of it and that's gonna keep it nice and flat on the mat, on the, uh, on the hoop. And then I'm gonna use some pins and I'm gonna put them out here in the outer border where they, there's no chance that that, uh, that they will get hit by any of the needles. Now, one thing I didn't do was get the design over to the machine. And I had a little internet issue this morning and my data design transfer is, I didn't hook it back up y'all. Um, I tried and I was, I had to call the internet company. So I'm gonna take the design over there on a USB. If that's okay with y'all. That's okay with me. Sometimes your internet goes out. That's the real world. That's life. Yeah. <laughs> okay. My internet went out yesterday, so I, I, I understand. <laughs> okay, so we are going to go over to the machine. If you want to give me a second, look at questions or anything, Jordan, because I need to get that on a USB stick. Let's see. I'm checking the chat, and I really think, um, let me see. We've been kind of answering them in the comments as much as we can, but I'm not really seeing anything that stands out too much. I'm looking, I'm looking. You guys are asking tons of questions and we're trying to keep up, but I don't think we can keep up. <laughs> yeah, let's see. If you have any questions now, drop them in the chat um, and we can see if Becky will get to them and while she's getting everything saved on her USB stick. But there's just lots of love for you, Becky. Tons and tons of love. Let's see. Oh, Mary Bailey said, what's the name of the blue mat? I guess the the one you use on the scan and cut. It's called the dime hoop mat. That blue mat? Oh, yes, yes. The dime, what was it, dime hoop mat? Yes. Dime hoop mat. There you go. That was the only one we've had so far. Just tons and tons of love. People love you. Becky's videos are fabulous. Awesome. Becky's a rock star. Look at that. <laughs> what machine did you buy? Oh, y'all are asking me questions. <laughs> um, I'm going to go and get, um, it is the RLX. It's the recertified um, 3817. We have it on our website. Just a little mechanical sewing machine just something that I can learn on first because I don't want to get you know I don't want to buy this big bad like sewing and embroidery machine and then you know what if I'm not good at sewing I don't know <laughs> so I'm gonna start That's out it's not possible <laughs> what do you I'm gonna like not have my pants correctly but that I'm gonna just get a little a little sewing machine teach myself how to sew from there and then as I learn more and as I grow, I'll probably upgrade. But I was ready to get a 10 needle like off the bat, like a couple I months ago. I was, I was fully trying to convince my mom we needed to start a side hustle and we just needed to start embroidering everything we could find. And I, I'm still trying to convince <laughs> her of that. So I'm ready when you are. Sure. Okay. <laughs> so you know what? I'm really glad, Jordan, that you said that because a lot of people think that the 10 needle is for a business. And Yes, you can run a business with this. You can even um, daisy chain more than one of these and yeah, get them all I going at one time, just like, you know, a real shop. Yeah. But I really 
don't tell my luminaire this, okay? But I really prefer this machine. <laughs> Mostly because once you get the hang of it, it is so easy to use. And I think it's a little less. So this thing is just this side of a commercial machine, industrial type commercial machine. And it doesn't have all the technology in it that the Luminaire does. But this PR 1055X Entrepreneur Pro is designed to be hands off, which I love. And it also has the brother, my stitch monitor, which you can put on your phone. And the Luminaire does that as well. And um, I can be running around the house and it'll tell me if it has a problem, which is rare. I mean, rare. Most embroidery machines have an inferiority complex. And if you get up and walk away from them, they're like, don't leave me. <laughs> and they mess up or something. But you really don't have that with this particular machine. And I just love it. So let's get to what we built with the scan and cut file, that FCM file that the scan and cut created from the scanned paper pattern. And now we have turned it into an embroidery file using Simply Applique. So here's my main screen. And on this main screen, let me get you up a little closer so you can see what it looks like. I probably don't use this the way you're supposed to, but I use it the way it works for me. On this main screen, just like the scan and cut, when you see these designs and there's borders and all kinds of monograms and all lettering and whatnot, quilting designs, these are ones that are already in the machine when you bought it. And then down here, you have some options to get designs that were not there when you bought it. If you loaded a design in the machine and saved it there, like I did on those, then, then that's where they would be. Let me go to return. You can get it from a USB. You can use a mouse with this machine. You can cable it to your computer, or you can send designs to it wirelessly. So I have it on a handy dandy power tools with thread USB. A lot of people ask me about this dongle that I have right here. This is actually just a USB port that I have connected into the machine and it's it's an Amazon Basics. It's got three USB ports in it. And so the wear and tear on the USB port is happening on this that I can replace for $10 and it's not happening here on the machine's USB port. So I'm gonna touch the, the universal symbol for USB, which is that little trident. And do I have it connected? I think I do. USB media is not loaded. Maybe I don't have it in there all the way. There it is. There's our X and O right there. And I'm going to touch it. And I'm going to tell it set. That means that's the design that I want to use. So uh, from here, I could delete it. I could put it into memory on the machine. But I'm going to hit set. And that's the design I want to use. From here, I can rotate it. I can change this. Here's the size button. Here's the rotate button. There's the mirror button. You can do all kinds of stuff with this machine, but I don't want to do anything with the size at all because the size was already established when we cut out all our letters. And if you change the size, it won't work. So I don't have to do anything with this at all. This is an edit screen, and I'm just going to hit edit end. Now, I need to tell the machine what thread to use. And I'm going to pick up my, my camera. It don't, don't take me off screen. I want to show here. I have the thread color that I want to use. I have no idea what number that is, but that's the color I want to use. And that's on spool number two. So I love this because I am not one of those embroiderers that gets all hung up on Oh, I got to have the exact thread color. That's what the pattern said. In this case, the pattern doesn't tell you what color at all. And so I just chose a color that I thought would look nice with my letters. And it's on spool number two. So let me move this out of the way here. Maybe you can see, yeah, a little bit. We have, and the gold is on one. And then there's the one I'm going to use on two. Here's three, four, five is black in the back. Six is white, and then all the other colors that I have over on the other side from some other designs that I was doing. 
So in order to tell the machine, let me get you up here as best I can. Get you angled right so you can see. In order to tell the machine what thread I want to use, I'm going to touch this button with three little spools on it. And it gives you a preview right here. Let me get a pointer from the scanning cut so I'm not got my hand all in the way. So it gives you a preview right here of what it's going to stitch. And these numbers right here on this side of the, the arrow scroll bar are the, the stitch order. This is the first stitch, second stitch, third, fourth, fifth, sixth. And you've got isocord. I have isocord thread loaded in here. It does not matter. I'm going to use the same thread color for every single stitch. And that's okay. It thinks it's going to be different. And if it was to use these colors, it would be gold and peach and black and gold and peach and black. But I don't want that. I want to use spool number two. These right here on these number set of numbers correspond to the 10 spools. You can see I've got five anchored on black and I've got six anchored on, I've got white anchored on six. Hold on. Okay. So I want the very first one to be the red and I, I have my red on spool number two. Now, this goes a little bit backwards, all right? So I need it to stop after it stitches the first stitch so that I can put my fabric down on top of the placement line. But you can't tell it stitch then stop. You have to tell it stop, which is your hand, stop then stitch. If I put the hand right here, it'll stop before it ever gets started. So I have to go to the second one and then I'm gonna tell it stop and then stitch number two. And that second stitch is going to be the second spool of thread. Then after it stitches this, it's gonna to go to the third one. And if I was doing it applique without pre-cut, pieces, I would tell it stop again. So before it stitched the third stitch, I could trim away all of the fabric from around the tack down stitch. But I don't have to do that because I've already cut out my letters. All I have to do is to tell it to stop to give me time to put my letters on. So I'm going to go to the next one. There's my O. And I want that to be spool. Oops, I'm sorry. Let me go back. This needs to be spool number two. That's the final satin stitch. Then I'm going to go to the O. I want that to be spool number two. The fifth stitch is the tack down stitch. Before it stitches the tack down stitch, I want it to stop so I can put my letter on. And then I want that to be on spool number two. And then the final one, if I did not have a pre-cut letter, I would tell it to stop so I could trim away the fabric, but I've got a pre-cut letter so I don't have to tell it to stop and I'm just gonna tell it number two and I'm gonna tell it okay. And that's it, we're done. That's how you set the thread colors and the stops in the Brother 10 Needle. That's how I do it <laughs> anyway. So I need to uh, step away for just uh, 30 seconds, Jordan. You got it. While you're stepping away, we can show you guys the overlay we have for the 10 needle. Let's see. All right. So the brother uh, PR 1055X 10 needle, the Entrepreneur Pro X. This is this is what I want. This is what I'm trying to convince me and my mom to get into. Um, you can see it's got tons and tons of specs and just there's so much more than just this. Like Go check out the, the product page that we have for the 10 needle. There's just so much good information. Um, and this machine can just do so much. Look, 10 needles, large 10.1 inch built-in high definition LCD display, add beautiful stippling and decorative fills, create beautiful sashing, high-speed background scanning, 
10 needle auto threading. There's just so much that this machine can do. I would highly, highly, highly recommend it if you're looking to get into embroidery or if you want to be like me and just dive in head first to probably the most expensive embroidery machine that I could get, um, I would go with this one. It can just do everything. And like Becky said, you don't have to babysit it. You can program it to do what you want it to do and you can step away and you can start the laundry. You can start cooking. You can do you know, you're not, you don't have to sit there and make sure it stitches everything out properly and make sure it doesn't mess up. It's like, it's like a kid that you can just leave and, and you know, it's not going to like punch through walls or right on the wall. <laughs> <laughs> you can just trust that it's going to do its job. <laughs> I'm ready when you are. All right. We'll, we'll bring you back. There we go. So I have hooped, let me turn it down just a little bit here so you can see, I have hooped my topper, all right, and I still have my placement, my designs target, uh, designs and machine embroidery target sticker. This machine also uses the snowman technology, but I wanted to show people who don't have snowman technology how they could also uh, find center, but we'll do, we'll do snowman technology too. Let me get you up here pretty close. So one of the, another beauty of this machine is the, um, what did I do? I walked away and set my little, oh, here it is. It has a camera. There's a camera button right there. And I want to, I want it to take a picture or touch the camera. It says the frame will be scanned with the built-in camera. I'm going to tell it. Okay. Taking a picture. <clears throat> oh, we have a question um, from Karen on YouTube. She says, is Becky using both the book and the USB? Um, you mean the book and the CD? Uh, yeah, I think so. No, in this particular instance, I used just the book because we use simply applique to create the embroidery file right so from the camera i can see right here first of all i need to rotate it because it needs to be uh x's and o's and it's upside down right now so i'm gonna hit the rotate button and i'm gonna rotate it 90 and i'm gonna rotate it 90 and i'm gonna look at and just kind of eyeball to see I'm a little bit closer to this side than I am to this side. So you can either use the jog buttons and jog it over like I'm doing, or you can actually touch the screen. You know what? I was pretty right on with that target sticker. You can see that right there. That looks pretty good. And I think I want it. I think I want it a little higher. You guys tell me, do you like that? You want me to move it? I like think? it like that. I think it looks great. Okay. Well, you're the design person, so I'm going to go with what you said. <laughs> okay. You got it. <laughs> okay. So that's where I want it to stitch right there. Now, it's going to stitch the X first and then the O. I turned it around. Don't forget. I'm just going to tell it okay, and we're done. So now I'm going to touch embroidery. And it says wait a while, and it didn't take very long at all. And I'm ready to go. So let's watch it do its thing. And I'm going to put that right there. I'm just going to hit the lock button and I'm going to tell it go. And it's going to stitch out the placement line for the X. Look at that. That is so neat. It is very quiet too. I, I feel like I would imagine it to be like super, super loud. That is so cool. Okay. I think I need to get one. It should stop. And it did. Okay. I'm going to take the hoop out and I'm going to iron on my little X. No, oh, no. I think we may have lost Becky. No, I'm ironing. Oh, no, I'm she's ironing. here. 
I was like, I know you went off camera, but <laughs> I didn't hear much. Let's see. I know, isn't that machine just the best? Like, I'm telling you, I really think I need to get one. And yes, like surprisingly very, very quiet. Like, I, you would think a big, bad embroidery machine would just be like, -na 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 -na. no, not this one. <laughs> You, I mean, if you, if you ask anybody who's not familiar, I was not familiar, and, you know. Okay. <laughs> so if you look, if you look, the X, let me pull it up. The X fit perfectly in that placement line that we created with Simply Applique. Okay. Now, I will tell you, the patterns in the book, the applique patterns in the book, do not go with the seed, the, the patterns on the CD. They're different sizes. So now, even though I've already ironed this down, I am going to let it stitch the tack down line just to be sure I have got everything. I, you want to do that just to be sure you don't have anything hanging off where it ought to not be. Generally, the final set of stitch is three millimeters in width. And that's perfect. I can tell there's no extra fabric hanging out outside the placement line. And it's just going to right away start into the final satin stitch on the X. See, I didn't have to do anything. I don't have to change threads or anything. It literally it's going to be, this is going to take uh, one minute. It, it really does all the work for you. Like that is crazy. You guys want to see around my sewing room? <laughs> yeah, give us a tour. Oh, no, give us a cute little tour. So, let me show you around my sewing room while that's working. I do all my video editing right here. This is where Power Tools with Thread, all the magic happens right here on my desk. Don't look at my, uh, this is, <laughs> I need to fix that. This Kahlua lamp is precious to me. A friend of mine at Kirtland Air Force Base in 1992 she and I killed that bottle together with white Russians before I shipped out to Korea. <laughs> she made a lamp out of the bottle for me. That's and awesome. So this is the cutting table that my husband made for me. And I love the big cubbies. And I've got my Cricut uh, heat presses over here. And then this used to be a garage, y'all. And then this is the design wall that he made for me over here and that's a quilt that i'm working on that's a pat sloan uh woodland wonderland and that's autumn wonderland from the fat quarter shop so i'm in the middle of working on that the little and my husband too. made those ruler racks for me and my son is making some that's going to go on our store site and then this is sewing machine row right here <laughs> Primary piecing machine, the Brother PQ 1500. This is my travel machine, the Brother NQ 3700D. It's a uh, sewing and embroidery combo. So I take that in the motorhome when we travel. And this is my primary sewing machine. That's my piecing machine. That's my sewing machine. And then this right here is my ironing station. This is a hemness dresser from Ikea. And my husband made a bigger top on it for me so that I could actually put out a whole fat quarter and get that, um, get, you know, and lay it out for an iron, a fat quarter all at one time. My iron is the Sapporo gravity fed and underneath the Flamingo is the, um, the, the distilled water that feeds it. And this iron is six years old. I've never had to replace it because there's never water in the machine. It's fabulous. Wow. Ooh, let's go see. Let's go see. We have a comment on YouTube that said, I thought Becky had her mute button on, but not the case. That machine is quiet. Look at that. So it jumped right from the final satin stitch on the X and it jumped over to the O. Look at that. Cindy said, where is Keith's machine located? 
<laughs> it's back in his room. <laughs> He's got his craft room too. Yeah. So now I'm going to uh, remove the hoop and I'm going to iron on the O right there. Just a minute. I've got my little, um, I've got my little, can y'all, I'm trying to figure out where the camera thing is. I'm using my little Cricut mini iron for this and my Steady Betty. I love it. So I, that's why I wasn't talking. You have to pay attention when you iron this stuff down. Otherwise, it'll get all wonky on you. Okay. So that looks good, and it's ready to be stitched. Okay. Back over here. And I'm just going to push lock and go. And it's got four minutes left, and it's going to finish up the tack down stitch now, and then the final set and stitch on the O. This satin stitch is gorgeous, y'all. It's perfect. It's beautiful. This machine, the, the stitch quality on this machine is far superior to any other machine I've ever used. So let's go back over here. Okay. While that's doing that. And then... Um, Right next to the ironing station is, can you see that? There's the Brother Luminaire right, right there. And then I I started in garment sewing. And let me put this down. I don't want you guys to get sick or anything. So what you can see, I have a Brother 1034D lock, the, the serger right here. I love this machine. I love it so much. I have another one down at the coast at our coastal home. And then I have a uh, Janome cover stitch over here. And I like that if I'm going to alter t-shirts or anything. So, and this one right here, you guys need to see this. This is a featherweight 221. Look at that. That is Her name gorgeous. Is She's a beauty queen. Oh, it is <laughs> that is so cute. This machine was gifted to me by a lady in North Carolina. She said she needs to come home. So, um, yeah, this this machine is just, this is an heirloom uh, machine. Its date of birth was... Um, August of 1950, I think is what her date of birth is. Oh. And it's and a great day to it as well. And then that's, my husband made that shadow box for me. That's for my military retirement. And uh, so I have everything in here that makes me happy. I spend eight to 10 hours a day in this room. Oh, yeah. and my long arm. So this is the King Coulter Special Edition. And it has a butler, quilt butler tablet on it because I can't, I can't do this. So that's, I'm a power tool with thread. I don't do anything by hand. So I uh, use this in order to do all of my quilting. And I have a 12 foot frame in here. So, and then my husband just um, put a light. I call this my bat cave because I have batting in here. And whatnot. This used to be a garage, so this is the water heater and whatnot. And then this is where I keep all my large cones of thread. Let me pull this up here. I'll show you guys what I just did for thread storage. I just created uh, the peg rack. So that's oh, where I keep all neat. of my isocord. There's all the dime. Um, most of this metallic thread up here, that's that King Star. I got that at the All Brands booth in Houston at the quilt show last year. Oh, we're done. Did oh. you hear that? We're done. <laughs> Yay! Oh, so very fast. Oh, it's so pretty. Look. Look at that. Oh, and look, that is so cute. No puckers at all. That's because wow. of that SF-101 on the back. 
if you were to do this heavy satin stitch on these quilting cottons, you would have all kinds of puckers and whatnot, but you don't. Everything is smooth and beautiful because we used SF 101 on the back. I oh, love it. Gorgeous. gorgeous. So now I just need to do the other three corners and uh, I'll be finished. And that'll be it. Wow. Yep. Let's see. So if we want to let's it. recap, I hope you have a lot of fun. <laughs> let's recap a bit. So we started out on the on the scanning cut. So we've got an overlay here for the SDX two twenty five. Um, it includes over eight hundred and forty dollars in added value, you guys. So not only like you're gonna get all of this stuff for free, for free, and on top of that, you get free shipping. You can't beat that. That's a great deal. And then we did I the do, 10 And needles. I do scan and cut tutorials on my channel for free. Yes, yes. If you can't make it into, into a class, um, Becky is the, she is the class. Her channel is the class. <laughs> if you need to learn <laughs> anything about the scan and cut, Power Tools with Thread is, is where you need to be. That's for sure. Well, let me caveat that with I'm good with fabric. I'm not a vinyl crafter or a paper crafter in any form. But if you want to know how to cut fabric and use fabric with that thing, I'm your girl. <laughs> She's your girl. And, and we did the, this is the Camberbell Cutie CD and pattern book that we showed. So we had the book was $24.95 and the CD was $34.95. And somebody in the comments did the math for me and it came out to around 60 bucks. So you can get 60 bucks for the pattern book and the CD. Kind of learned a lot today. Learned a bunch. Let's see. Oh, she's back. <laughs> but yeah, that was amazing. This has been a lot of fun. Thank you. Thank Love you so much for hosting me. This has been a blast. This was so much fun, you guys. Thanks for letting me host. I know this was this was quite the rodeo. I will I will uh, definitely give credit where credit is due. Barbara and Callie, you guys are amazing. I did this one time, and I'm like, ah. <laughs> yeah, you did great. You did great. Hey, I want to mention one thing too. If anybody's watching from overseas, you can buy Simply Applique from all brands as a download you don't yes. have to purchase the physical product yes so yes. if you're if you're outside of u.s shipping um i'm not sure about canada i don't know how that works with brother you guys would know that better than i but if you are i know that you used to have to call and barbara would give you a code but now they have it on their website when you pull up simply applique the first one is the physical product and yes. the second one is a download, and that's for outside of U.S. purchases. Yes, I just linked it in the chat for everybody to see. So if you want to grab that digital download copy of Simply Applique, you totally can. It's right there on our website. But thanks so much, Becky, for being on the show. Thank you, everybody, for tuning in. And now I think you guys are ready for that giveaway. I think. Are you ready? I think we're ready. So let's go ahead and pick a winner. Woo, so exciting. Drum roll. There was plenty of you guys. Fingers crossed, fingers crossed, fingers crossed. Pam L on YouTube. Congratulations, Pam. You just won a $50 all brands gift card. That is super awesome. You can put it towards Simply Applique. Um, just go ahead and email us at events at allbrands.com with your name, your phone number, and your address so we can get that uh, gift card out to you. But thank you, everybody, for a great, great show. It has been tons of fun hosting. Becky, thanks for being on the show. Thanks you are having me. I've had so much fun. Thanks, Jordan. <laughs> thank you, Becky, and thank you, thank everybody. Thank you, Callie. Thank you, Barbara. They're, all, they're back here, too. <laughs> Thanks, guys. We'll see you next week. Bye. Bye. Subscribe. <laughs> we love a good technical difficulty.